If you've got a game, a bit like this one that you can see on the screen at the moment, you might just have a single screen of things going on. So here's my little yellow character and he can run around, jump around on this particular screen like this, run around the place, but he stays on this particular screen and that might not be quite the sort of thing you want. You might want him to be able to go off to the side over here or off to the other side and for the screen to scroll with him. And scrolling backgrounds are really useful in computer games because they can give the impression of a huge length to a level or a height to a level or just a general size to a level without you actually having to do a great deal of work. So what I'm going to do in this particular tutorial is show you how to get a scrolling background. And in a second tutorial I'm going to talk a little bit about a special sort of scrolling called parallax which gives the impression of depth to things. So we're going to leave these two um, sword fighters here to their, um, to their business and instead we're going to have a look at how to start coding a scrolling background. So if I come into a Pico 8 project here, you know already that up at the top up here you can design some sprites and on this particular tab you can start working on a map and both the sprites and the map are going to be very useful in this. So to start with I'm just going to draw a very very simple background. So I might take some brown here and dot it with a few splodges of orange like that and I'm going to make sure that this looks like some grass so I will give it classic grass okay I'm going to take another square make it completely brown dot in some oh no that's a disaster completely brown dot in some orange again so that I've got just a piece of earth effectively there okay um, and then maybe, just for a bit of interest, I'm also just going to have some sort of hanging stones that I might use later on. So I'm just going to do this. Okay, all will become clear in just a second, I am sure. Okay, like that. And again, give it some orange bits and pieces. So it's nothing um, too special in terms of graphic work, but what will happen in a minute is you'll be able to see a, a background being built. So I've got my three sprites here. And I'm going to go over to the map and I'm going to draw the particular map here. Now as you know in Pico 8 the map itself is 127 pixels wide. It's made up of 16 different squares wide and 16 squares up and down. But on this particular screen here, um, if we were to look at what's actually on display on this screen, then you know that here you only see about 8 squares, whereas all the way across you see all 16. And this is a bit tricky because often what happens is people fill in this bit of the map here and then when they come to run the program only half the map appears. So what we're going to do is make sure that we scroll around this map. And to scroll around the map, if you press the space bar when you're actually on the map itself, you can move around the map and have a look at things. And the important thing is from this dot here to this dot over here is the width of a map. And then if I move it like that, these dots down here represent the bottom. Okay, So what you've effectively got from there to there is a quarter of the map. There is another quarter. We scroll it down a bit. There is a quarter and there is a quarter. Okay, So if we start down near the bottom here, okay, I'm going to fill the bottom of my map with this. okay, And then I'm going to take maybe this top row off here like a couple of top rows off and I'm going to put some grass down instead so you can now see where I've done that particular grass design and then up here I think I've already started drawing put a blob in by accident I'm going to put a sort of floating island Mario style that we might have and so there's a floating island okay and maybe I'll just have another little island here like so so I've got two floating islands on my map okay and some ground like this and if I zoom out you can see my map there. That's what my screen is going to look like between these four blobs because I've zoomed out. It's now showing the four blobs as the edge of the screen. So that is my map drawn. Okay, I'm just going to zoom back in again, scroll the map so it's sitting in the top corner. So if I go into some code here and put a function draw in place, all right, making sure as ever I end the function. The first thing I might want to do is clear the screen. So I'm going to clear the screen to a nice light blue because that's going to look like some sky. So I'm going to come up here, light blue down there. If you have a look down the bottom corner, light blue is color 12. 
So I'm going to clear the screen to color 12 and I'm going to draw the map. And the map, as you remember, if you've seen about drawing maps before, starts at this top left corner, 0, 0. I'm going to draw it at 0, 0 on my screen. It's going to be 16 pixels wide and 16 pixels high. OK, so for a map to be drawn, 0, 0, 0, 0, because I want it at the top left of my screen. And how many squares across? I want it 16 by 16 squares. OK, and if I press Escape and run, there's my map on the screen. OK, so my map's sitting there and everything looks lovely. So how on earth are we going to actually make this thing scroll? Well, let's just take a second or two to think about what's really going to go on. The first thing, again, to remember is that the screen itself has a view. So if you imagine here, this is my game screen, OK? And then in pink here, I'm going to draw the map, all right? Now, the map gets drawn over the top of the screen, and so far everything is good. But what I'm going to do, each turn, I'm going to move the map this way a little bit. So then it's going to be drawn here. OK, and what's going to happen is I'm going to end up with a bit of black there as this thing, or blue in my case, because I've got a blue background. As this map scrolls to the left, it's going to scroll. The view window, which is the yellow, is going to be in place. And the map is going to slowly move this way until at the end of it, if I draw it in a sort of blue color here, when I'm finally done, I'm going to end up with my map virtually disappearing off the screen. And that's not going to be much use for a scrolling map. So I can show you that in action. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my code now. We're going to have a look at what happens when I start to move the map to the left. And we'll be able to see how we end up with this gap on the screen. So if I just get rid of all of that text. So the first thing to remember is that this is the coordinates of the map I want, which is up here, 0, 0. So that's the x, that's the y. These ones here represent the x and y coordinate on the screen. So I'm going to change this one from 0 to a variable called map x. Now, if I put map x in, I'm going to have to declare it. So I'm going to put map x equals 0 up there. And I'm going to have an update function. So it's going to be function update end. And I'm going to make sure that map x changes. So each turn, map x is going to get less by one. It's going to move to the left. So if we run this now, there goes my map. But as promised, you can see that there's a gap sitting there. We've got a problem because our map has shifted off the screen. So the way to get round this is really just a bit of a con. Everything in computer programming, as you probably have started to work out, is just a complete con. And this is just another of those. So if I come down and again, I'm going to draw my screen that we're working. This is the Pico 8 screen in yellow. I'm going to draw a map on the screen here. And that map's going to have at its top left corner the coordinate x. But I'm going to draw the map again next to it here. OK. And this one is going to be at x plus 128 pixels across. So in other words, it's sitting just there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow the map to move to the left. So as we go along, the map's going to move that way. And so in a little bit of time, we can imagine, if I just draw them in different colors this time, I'm going to have the first map sitting, say, there. And the second map, if I go to another color like um, this, no, that's the same color. If I go to another color, the second map sitting here. And so what effectively it looks like is that this edge here is sitting here, but it's not. The edge of the first map has come off the screen and is very much at a negative number. This second edge is the second map. When we finally get to the point where this map is off the screen, we reset our x value back to zero. So when x is all the way over here at minus 127, or less than minus 127, we reset everything and start again. OK, so let me go back into my code. And we're going to put something like that together. And we should get a lovely scrolling background. So again, bin all the drawings. OK, 
So the first thing we're going to do is just put in a quick conditional statement to check if the map x is less than minus 127. Remember that's very much on the left hand side. So if map x is less than minus 127, then map x equals zero. And if I run this, you can see the map scrolls and when it gets to the very edge, the map appears again. But as we said, that's a bit of a mess. We don't want it to work like that. We want a second map to be drawn. So now we come into here, copy this line of code, and underneath we paste it and we draw our new map 128 pixels away from the first map. And if we run it now, we can see our nice scrolling background. And it's very simple. And that's all that needs to happen to get some scrolling backgrounds working in your games. What I'll do in the next tutorial is talk about how to get several layers of scrolling backgrounds working to give you a really interesting effect called parallax. But for now, happy programming.